All right, um, we're here today testing the last couple of safety valves, and um, I just wanted to bring up close close up here so you can see the gauge, and then of course the safety we're testing here. I put it on a ball valve because uh, you have to be able to shut it off in order to test it. I mean, it's a little bit dangerous if you're down in there and the thing pops in your face because you got to look down inside. So. This valve here goes off at about 120 and receives at about 120, or I'm sorry, about 8 pounds under, which is a little more than I like, but sometimes you can't get it perfect, and it, it varies from the volume of the steam, so the main thing is the pop-off, and here's what we're going to see right now, it's going to pop off. Yep. Okay, it's just starting. Let's see what we got. That's at 120. It's not fully open yet. I'm going to have to hit that a little bit. Just a hair readjustment. And if I touch that valve, it'll pop. Okay. Takes all that out. You're going to reseat with a positive, positive reseat. That is making me a liar, right? It's a little bit better than that. I've gotten them before. Now, that's tight. That little wisp is nothing. It's just when it's to the verge of being popping off, it does that. When it's right up to the pressure, they all do that. Even the best ones you can buy are do that. Okay, now we'll see. Uh, coming up on the 120, let's see what happens this time. Now, see, I gotta adjust that up a little bit. I'm gonna shut it, and we're gonna adjust it, and then we'll be back. I can do it better than that. Now put a little more pressure on the spring. What happens is the spring starts to heat up and then it takes a set. So what you got to do is put more, a little more pressure on it. And it's very, very sensitive to change. So I have to add, I have to just do a little bit of modification to the screw there. Now let's see what it does now. guys asked about how to test the safety valve well really the only real way to test it is right on steam it's going to tell you everything that's the way it works works on steam so that's what you test it on now see I don't like that I like the pop so if I shut this off open up my safety safety and just I'm gonna raise the blowdown ring one notch That's one notch, and it'll pop now. It'll be, it's just, let's see if it pops now, more closer to 120. There, see that's closer, now she's got that pop, just by changing it that way. Now let's see what the blowdown seat is, the seat pressure, reseat. Now, see, it's, see it changed that now. So, what you got to do, let it pop off again, let it pop off again, and then uh, clears itself out, sets itself, reseats itself, so on. Well, see, now it changed again. Raise it up a little bit. Raise up the blowdown ring. Raising it up makes it pop. But then there's a certain fine line where it can't be. And then it won't reseat. So 
it'll pop, but it won't reseat. Nope. See, I don't like that. Raise it up a little more, see what happens. This other valve is set just a little bit below 120, so I can blow that off and release the pressure. I don't have to go all the way down. Say still more than it's not right yet. Not right yet. Now I lowered it down about six notches to see what it does now. Raising above 120. But see, now she pops. Let's see what she's going to reseat now. That's the next thing. I want that positive reseat. Okay. I got to lower it a little bit more. A little bit more. See, now when you turn it back on, she stopped that because you got to have just the right balance of everything. Let's try that now. Let's try that. Probably going to pop a little higher. Usually does that. That's not all that unacceptable. I like the positive receipt. See, that's still not right yet. We'll get it. I'll drop it a little bit more. Now if I reduce the pressure here by by changing that, it's showing me that it's it's opening too much. Okay, so let's knock it down one more notch. Okay. It now changed just by one more notch. Now I'll put a little more pressure on it. Put a little more pressure, see what happens. Now a little more pressure on the spring. We'll get it. It just takes a little bit. It takes about a half an hour or so to do each one. This is like the second to last one I need to do. Still not the way I like it. We're going to raise it up now. Raise it up two notches. I got. I put a little mark on the uh, ring, blow down ring so I can see where I'm at. On the new ones, I'm going to. I've got the um, little set screw here situated right over a rib. So I'm going to move it over here so I can look straight into it. So I can set it a little bit better. So I can tell where the notch is, and the V goes into the notch and just stops it from turning. It doesn't really put pressure on it, because if you did, what that would do is set it off a little bit. I'm using a 172 screw for the set screw. It's a 7 64th weed, weed ha and a little weed ha square yet screwdriver. Oh, no good. Gotta lower the other one, blow the other one off. That one's set good. That one shuts down. This is like a sweet spot in there, like you gotta cheap keep, keep trying until you get it just right. There she goes. That's what I wanna hear. Now let's see what we got. Give me that positive receipt. Ah, yes. That's what I want to see. Okay, now. That's what I want to see. Just like that, a little wisp is okay, my opinion. 
doesn't really hurt anything and then she pops off in that positive receipt now I like to get them at five pounds was nice two pounds is like ultimate five pounds is nice seven isn't bad even eight and that's that's pretty good that's about what this one is now eight pounds what the heck in my opinion is some of the clubs advocate no higher than 120 125 personally I think it should be 10 pounds higher for some of the bigger locomotives but some people you just can't convince of that yes sir that's it that's the Mercer valve for you right there a lot of work went into that guys took me about two and a half years of um, experimenting uh, getting the castings made and then having to machine those and I bought the CNC mill which lay I'm sorry I keep calling it a mill it's a lathe it's over there it's an MCO Meyer 220 MCO turn 220 and unfortunately I can't get it to run so I'm converting it to Mach 3 I know that'll raise a few eyebrows and I have a good friend I met on the internet Pete He's going to help me with it. I thank God for him. He's only 14 miles from here, believe it or not. Um, there she's going to pop right at 120. Come on, baby. Let me hear that pop. Right now. Beautiful. Beautiful. Look at that. So there it is. I set valve, 120 valve. So I got 120, 125. Now I have set him at 95 and 100. Um, Post war Bob asked me to do that for him. And I got him done. But it wasn't easy. So I'm going to have to probably get a different spring. And then some of the higher pressures. Um, uh, someone asked me to make a 150. And that's a tough one. It's really hard to set because the kunkel you can see in the background right here that is set at 150 so that's going to pop off at the same time I can raise the pressure of that a little bit but I really don't think we should be setting them at 150 145 maybe 140 is great and uh, you'll be surprised how the uh, injectors work better and everything at that pressure I got an Olin camp injector down there at that pressure when I open the injector she just goes right in and no, no dribble so Let's see if it goes one more time. Okay. There you have it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, it didn't show my face, but I'm here, so here I am. I like to show my face. People know who I am. Anyway, here we go. One more time for good measure. And that's going to wisp a little bit now this time. There she goes. I usually let it do that three or four, maybe eight times. There you go. Thanks again for watching. See you on the next video.